Hello, everyone. <laughs> Just checking here the volume and the sound. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Uh -huh. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hello, Hello. everyone. Hey. Oh, so good, good to see everybody. you all. Hello. Just checking all the technical aspects as we are settling down here. Good Hello, morning. everybody. So it's good to see you all. Hello. Hello, Susan. Hello, Janice. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> all right. So thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and thank you all for being here. Just uh, still checking sound, checking all the technical aspect. Hello, Kimberly, Veronica. Say hi in the chat so I can uh, <laughs> respond to your beautiful greetings. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm so, so thrilled to have you all here. This is awesome. Awesome to have you all on board. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing this beautiful container where we are all connecting together from our hearts, from our divinities, from our beingness together here in this time, uh, time and place coordinate. So thank you, thank you all for making some space to be here with us, with Elizabeth and myself today. So as I'm seeing more of you coming in, hello. Um, Afke, thank you for being here. Brenna, hello. Hong Kong, Linda, hello. Tiffany, Tiffany with a T-I-P-H. Interesting, beautiful. Tiffany, Alan, Mary, Kimberly, Bonnie, Suzette. Hello, Suzette. And Bertil, thank you all. This is amazing. We're thrilled to be uh, with you all. And this is uh, Wondrous Conversations. I'm just checking all of it here. This is Wondrous Conversations, Manifesting Your Wondrous Abundance, part five. We've been working on this topic of abundance, prosperity, how to manifest it for the whole year. This is part five. And I'm thrilled to have Elizabeth on board. She's back with us. And it's always so exciting to share her brilliant perspective of things. And we're going to have her on board very soon, friends. <clears throat> Just checking that all as well. Hello, Christina. Hello, Moraine. Hello, and Hillary. Thank you, Hillary. And welcome back. For <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. I asked you to give us some time with Agustin, my assistant, to check all the <laughs> technical aspects before we open uh, to everyone. Thank you, Hillary, for your patience. And so... Sure. Thank you. Beautiful friends, we're all here in these uh, interesting times that we are together and in this beautiful planet Earth, so much is going on. And we know that to many people, the topic of abundance can be really quite challenging, right? So we're trying to find different tools, different insights, thoughts, perspectives, basically from all our beautiful uh, guest speakers every time we meet so that you can choose your tools, you can pick the, the insights, the perspectives that best suit you. So we're here to help, we're here to share all of our, um, whatever we have here at hand to share with you. This is our commitment, this is our own soul destiny, our purpose for being here, and I'm talking uh, on behalf of all the guest speakers, Elizabeth herself, I'm sure, of course, and myself, uh, from our own unique, you know, uh, specialties, if you win on areas of expertise. And today, my friends, <clears throat> now that we're, I think we're all set here, Yuma, Damien, hello. Thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. And um, I would like to ask you just a few things before we kick off. Basically, this is um, a three-part event. We're going to open up. I'm going to start up talking about my tool that I would like to share with you. Uh, and this is the Soul Blueprints Codes Illumination Systems. And then we're going to talk, I mean, specifically today about code number three, which is the code that is uh, in many people. Some people do not have it, but many people do have it. And it's all about the lesson of journeying from poverty to wealth 
And this is something that I think is quite relevant to our topic of manifesting prosperity and abundance here. And so, um, yes, we're going to do that. And then I will be thrilled to bring in Elizabeth. She's going to talk about her own unique, brilliant perspective of how to address um, the manifestation process. And she indeed uses other words, different terminology and concepts. And she's going to open up our, our heads, as she always says, from her own uh, brilliant perspective, friends. And then, of course, part three will be opening up uh, for your questions. So get your questions ready. Hang on. Stay tuned until the end so that you can take that opportunity to come up, raise your hand, and bring in those questions. So I hope that we're all set. Please, that will make some 90 minutes, I think, more or less. So please set aside some 90 minutes so that we can all um, fulfill this amazing intention of being together, co-creating this space. And yes, um, let us again just uh, check that everything is okay. Elizabeth, I'm hoping that you're okay. <clears throat> okay, I uh, let's see if I can see. Hmm. Okay, Elizabeth, can you, Elizabeth, are you? Uh, I can see you in the chat, but I don't Here see you. Here we go. You. Sorry. Oh, I... oh. Ah, okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't unmute myself earlier, so a setting got fixed. Oh, yeah. and now I'm here. Oh, no, I, I just just was wondering. Uh, thank you. Thank you for showing up so that I can rest assured that we are together and ready to go. So, Elizabeth, dear, I hope that you're okay just holding the space until I am uh, covered with those uh, couple of things before, um, as I uh, just said, and then I will be... I will be bringing you in to start off our interview, okay? Wonderful. Yeah, okay, wonderful. Thank you, dear. Okay, so friends, let us then talk about a little bit about this tool, which I find uh, quite accurate, quite relevant, quite uh, enlightening. This is the Soul Blueprint Codes Illumination System. But before we get into all of that, I have a question for you. Did you know that basically your name carries a particular frequency and encoding and that is so, so meaningful and relevant in the outpicturing, in the creation of your own life reality? Um, I'm sure that you have all heard about, you know, that everything, the fact that everything is uh, sound, energy, vibration, and these, um, you know, is uh, something that has been resonating in the spiritual community more and more. These are words as stated by Tesla and Einstein. And we are beginning to understand, I think, these things more and more as we go along our paths. And uh, taking this as our premise, we can say that our names also carry frequencies just like anything else. And so the frequency that these uh, names, our names, especially our birth names, when we bring in a name, we're carrying a certain encoding, which at the same time includes certain lessons that we're here to, to experience in life. So what happens is that <clears throat> these lessons are here, of course, for our progress, for our evolution, and also for energy balancing, things that are pending, things that have not been understood in past lives or simultaneous lives, as we now know, are here now again, uh, coming up to the forefront so that we address them and clear them and learn from, okay? So yes, it's interesting that we all have in our names a certain encoding. Now, we can know what these codes are. These, uh, the letters of our names are associated with one particular code. These are 22 codes in the system, which is a Hebrew numerology. Basically, this is what it is. And it tells us a lot about what we came here to do, what our challenges are, what gifts and talents we bring, um, and what goals we came here to, to actually move in the direction of. And this is at soul level, right? Before we are born, there is a plan, and we intend to align with that plan to the best of our abilities. We are, of course, free to choose whether to align with this plan or not. This is up to us. But... What happens is that when we do not align with this plan, it, it feels uncomfortable. It feels like we are off. It feels like we're not doing what we came here to do. 
And so by knowing, by feeling and aligning with this specific soul plan, <clears throat> things begin to come into place, to fall into place. So what uh, we can do with this system is to just get to know that, that uh, roadmap, that life map, but so mirror, showing everything there, you see, so you can um, enter your name and you can see the codes in talent's position, in um, challenge position and in goals position. And it shows the configuration of six, uh, a six pointed star, star of David, or it can also be known as a Merkaba in 3D perception. And you see how those codes that are associated again to the letters of your name, will show a specific theme, specific qualities, specific lessons that we're here to learn. And this is very important these days because many people are finding, you know, the need to find uh, meaning in their lives. And uh, I mean, in some other cases when we are already on the path and we already know what we're here to do, but this uh, is also a very great tool to confirm if we are on the right track, on the right path in our evolution. Now, today, uh, friends, I am interested in showing you one particular code, which is, um, you know, and this is something that I want to show you um, and to share so that you can have an idea. I'm going to show you um, the qualities of one particular code of the 22 codes of this system. These 22 codes are, as I said before, qualities, themes that come up in our lives. And they are associated with the 22 fire letters of the Hebrew language. This is quite esoteric and mystical. And it, there's a lot of ancient um, you know, uh, wisdom here. So it is all associated, it is believed to the very moment of creation. So these codes are there showing us certain things that we can tell by the illumination of the codes, the interpretation of the codes as they appear in our soul star, okay, in our chart. <clears throat> so this particular code uh, is a code that tells us um, that there is a need to challenge ourselves, that's why it appears, when it appears in challenge position, it is showing us the, um, it is indicating the need to address the lesson of moving out of poverty consciousness, of scarcity consciousness, of, uh, you know, limitation consciousness out of there, which may be the case uh, since childhood, these people carrying the code number three in their challenge position in their charts may come from families or social environments where there is, uh, you know, poverty, uh, situations of limitations in many ways. And so they're there to be prompted out of that situation by doing whatever is necessary in their, in their lives to move out of there by choosing specific careers where they can uh, work on the uh, quality of self-worth, okay? So let me just tell you, let me just share the um, screen so that we can take a look at what we are trying to say here. So um, this is something that I wanted to share with you. Um, the soul purpose system, the soul blueprint codes illumination system is like a mirror. It shows us uh, indeed where we are at and what we bring and where to move. So as you can see, this is a case, this person, Isabella Robbins, we entered her name and here are her codes. This is what we all have. We have numbers, we have codes, which are themes, which are lessons, which are talents and goals that we're invited and indicated to, to just take and work on. So you see here two triangles, the physical triangle pointing downward, the spiritual triangle pointing upward, and we have two sets of challenges, physical and spiritual, two sets of talents, physical and spiritual, and two, and a set of um, goals, physical and spiritual. And in the middle, the very important code of the soul destiny code or number, which indicates as we illuminate all the codes, we illuminate this one, and we have the answer to why we're here the answer to what's my highest purpose for being here. So uh, in challenge position, when the three 
Uh, and this is the code I wanted to talk to you about today. Code number three is the code of, um, you know, moving from poverty to wealth. Now, this person, when uh, we carry code number three in challenge position, what it is showing is that this person needs to learn from the lesson of self-worth. Many people have mixed feelings and emotions. They don't know how to express themselves. They have difficulty connecting with the world, connecting with their emotions, connecting with things around them. And it's confusing. And it's all about really learning how to connect inside with themselves, putting things in perspective, in balance, to find self-worth, self-value. Because number three code is the code of expression. And it has to do also with creativity. It has to do with the performing arts, with coming out on a stage and having things to say and to share their value, their content, or their expertise out in the world. So the number three code has to do with expressing these things out into the world. Now, can you imagine when the three appears in challenge position, this is telling us that these beautiful qualities are blocked. So they need to be worked on. Whatever challenges are in our lives and within us, which are shown in this uh, sacred geometry, you see this is the six-pointed star of David or Merkaba, as we said before, whatever is shown in challenge position, it is telling us what lessons we are indicated to focus on so that we can transmute all of that and really make it, you know, part of our toolkit of gifts. Okay, so this is really something that we are here to work on if we choose to be on the spiritual path. Otherwise, we can continue putting things under the rug and nothing's going on here and we're all great for now. But truth is that as we are moving along our evolutionary spiral, uh, we are called to work on those things, to look inside and to see what needs to be clear, what needs to be you know, purified, transmuted, in other words, and then become part of our talents. They're not supposed to stay as challenges, but we need to be here as masters of these challenges. We're here to be masters of these challenges and shadows uh, so that we can then use them to our benefit and to the benefit of others around us. So yes, here in the other star, we see this person, Isabella Robbins, uh, this is her original name, and she uh, wanted to change the code. She started uh, a process of rebirth or name optimization, and she tried different names, which were entered here in the system. And we, um, as we entered this other option of this same person, Mary Louise Robbins, we entered her name, and we see again uh, code number three as being in challenge position. You see, this means that the code still need to be clear. Um, this person wants to uh, really find the code that can help her in her life to express her emotions, to express her talents, her creativity, and maybe her expression, her assertiveness uh, out into the world. So she changed it to, um, uh, let us say to, and here it is, the star, uh, to use these talents out in the world to her benefit. So she tried again and she used, she tried the Louis Ann Robbins uh, name. And here we find number three code in talents position. So what I'm trying to show here, friends, is that there are ways where we can really, uh, that these codes are so uh, alive in our lives, in our relationships, in our circumstances, codes can actually help us flow in life or they can, you know, show obstacles or show, you know, uh, like it can be a real snowball in, at the doorway. So uh, these are something that are showing us really where we are standing. Okay, so yeah, I'm just trying to, okay. Uh, so as I'm trying here to go back to my screen, and I'm trying just to change this. Okay. Okay. 
So, yeah, uh, so as I was telling you, these codes are also tools that can help us, give us an idea of where we're standing, what we can do when things do not go right, when we see that our life is quite sticky or that our lives are kind of, you know, uh, not flowing as we would love to. Uh, these are things that can help us look and see where the obstacle is so that we can work on it, you see? Okay. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so yeah, let me just check. I can hear some sounds. Agus, can you please help us with uh, sound uh, background noises, please? Thank you, dear. Okay, so these are things that we can just use as an option for tools to help us along our spiritual path, just to know what's going on with our lives and how we can move forward by unblocking and working on these codes by transmuting the energies that are blocked there, okay? Uh, it's based on numerology and Hebrew mysticism, as we just uh, said. So if you have any questions regarding this, um, I would love to just uh, see your questions in the chat. And then when we open up, it would be great to, I would be more than happy to, to answer those questions. And um, yeah. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to Elizabeth and um, I would like to bring her on board. I would be very delighted to see her. Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> there <Hello>. you are. <laughs> I, sure, I sure like the name code idea. Um, I've done stuff like that before and it has been very interesting. Oh. Yeah, it's numerology and it's sacred. I mean, it's so mystical and so magical. And, you know, thank you for your appreciation of it, Elizabeth. It's quite accurate. People can find themselves there like to 98% of accuracy. So I find it can help people who are trying to see what's going on with their lives or maybe, you know, to just uh, refocus on what they need to work on, which is also shown there. So, uh, okay, but now I would love to bring you to the forefront, Elizabeth, to welcome you. And as always, uh, in appreciation for your presence, let me just uh, share uh, what you do uh, so that uh, people who may not know exactly what you do may know you a little better. So friends, of course, this is our beloved Elizabeth. She is considered an advanced seer and she works on the cutting edge of galactic and quantum anthropology, trauma, healing, and futurism. With her lifelong ability to see into and work with all dimensions, her theoretical and psychic work has helped people all over the world. Called Living Library and Oracle, Elizabeth has spent um, lots of time, her whole life rather, studying anthropological theory, quantum physics, ancient and modern medicine. And she has two science degrees, including a master's in applied anthropology. Her philosophies and practices bridge science and spirituality to support real change in the world. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for being here with us. Thank you and welcome back. <laughs> How are oh, you Thank doing? you, Sandy. It's really good to see you. Great. Yeah, <laughs> good. All right. I'm, so, I'm very well. I'm hoping my bandwidth will hold together for us today. Yes, I'm so happy that you could make it. I know that you had a few couple of things. Uh, I wish I could have had some time off, uh, uh, off the air to just that, uh, but I'm hoping that you're all fine at home with family. So it's uh, wonderful to have you and sharing your time here with us. So let's get into our beautiful interview. And I can say, friends, that uh, whenever I think of Elizabeth Wood, um, she brings me this idea and sensation that she is about to, you know, turn my mind uh, all, I don't know, upside down. Because she has these mind-blowing <laughs> concepts and uh, points of view, understandings, so deep insights that I'm ready. Oh, she's going to come up with something amazing. <laughs> and this is what she does. This is her magic. This is what she is. And let's share that, her magic with us, with us all. So um, I would like to start off, uh, Elizabeth, by asking exactly, this is the beginning, but I think it's a good place to start. Why is it that you're using the term prismatic when you are addressing the human beings, like you're qualifying humans as prismatic? 
I've seen that in your in yeah, your book. Yeah, that's a good how, question. How is, how is it that it comes up uh, as part of your definitions and concepts that you work on and talk so much about? Thank you for that. So um, I've had a, I've had the same business for over ten years called CRN Scientist, and it was all about me. And I got very clear over this past year. It, and I've actually been working on my site for some time, but I, I could see it coming handy when you're psychic. Um, mm. But the that I needed to focus on the skills, right? And um, we're working towards becoming a new species. We're working towards becoming something that many different scientists and even mystics especially have been calling homo luminous. I've heard some other people come up with terms for the species we're heading to become. And this is going to take some time, obviously. Um, becoming a new species actually happens very quickly, relatively, within a few hundred years because of the amount of pressure that we have to go through to go through that and become that. But before that, you know, we, we're we here, all of us, on the cutting edge to be prepared and prepare ourselves for that. And so I was shown something very special during this past solstice in June 2023 that the that our true nature is very prismatic and a prism is something that can show us the truth the true nature of something right so a prism breaks up a quality of light so that you can see the fullness of that quality of light and when you are actually working in the world as an observer as a creator you act as a prism you yourself are actually acting as a prism all the time and I want to help people to experience what that's like to be so clear, so clean, so transparent that all of consciousness, all of light, all of the different fields of energy we work with, like abundance is a field of energy, that when we work with these things, we can actually act as prisms ourselves and be able to work in many dimensions where all of these different qualities of light and frequency and atomic and material nature can actually be our playground. And right now, what that looks like for most of us, especially me, is we have a lot of trauma. We have a lot of what we might call spiritualized ego, where we all think we're right, especially me. I always think I'm right. Um, and when we have that, that distorts... Yeah, <laughs> that distorts the light, right? It distorts mm, the light. And right. then we're not seeing the clarity of yeah. what is coming from source from from other people and oh. from ourselves. So when Absolutely. we have two distorted prisms, you know, what are they really creating? Well, we've seen that. It's been 800,000 years of humanity going through a lot of pressure and slavery and traumas absolutely so it's our it's our chance now it's our chance now to be those very clear vessels that yeah. can really show the world each of us the truth the, the true nature of our light it's absolutely precious what you just said because it goes back to the idea of purity uh transparency um and purification if you will right we are here now in a process of global purification, personal purification, planetary purification to catch up with the rest of the planetary system or the solar system, which uh, I think we are quite behind in our evolution, right? So I think it's a lot of work, but it's so worthy. So I totally agree with that. And so now that we are sort of um, uh, clarified with why you're talking about that, is there a connection between that concept of yours that you so beautifully expressed to uh, source itself, to our divine essence itself? How does it all link together, <clears throat> excuse me, in our relationship from our human perspective? Because it looks like there's so many things, right, that we need to align to have an understanding of everything here. So yeah, I think it's linked, it's linked <laughs> together through the body. It's linked together through the body. And the body and the DNA, the, these are mm. technologies. Mm. And these technologies were developed in for a very specific, two specific reasons. And the, the one of them, the most important one that we can really start with is that 
our bodies have access to many dimensions all at once. Mm. So that's why we can actually see and perceive multidimensional beings and physical stuff and everything in between. And that's why we have access to the dream realms and et cetera. And, and it's why we can more easily than other beings attain a state where we're actually feeling one with the universe in a full body way. So it's the body that actually is our, um, it's our great, greatest tool to connect to all of these different points of light, right? So everything is conscious in our universe and they are all arising from a source field, a very still place. We call it sometimes the clear light. These mm -hmm. concepts come from Tibetan Buddhism and that, that clear light from which all things arise, it has that ultimate constant potential, but it's never moving. It's very still. We call it also the void. And so we all arise from this void into a very moving, busy universe where all of the light, all the information is always moving to and from something. There's, It's always radiating to and from. And that relationship is actually how the whole universe is constantly created by our own observations. So... When you have access, however, to all the dimensions all at once, you have a lot more active power. And that is the main key. If you can really get to know all your 12 light bodies, who you really are, what the nature of your specific quality of light is, because it's unique. And the fact that that quality of light, which is your immortal soul, is actually observing the universe into existence all the time. You're observing me into existence. And I'm observing you into existence. And when you take me away out of this equation, no longer do you actually exist in the universe technically until I observe you again. And wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> explain. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this is this okay. is this is based in in photon physics, right? So this is amazing. So, Can so, you maybe break up this concept a bit more uh, so that yeah. we can be there uh more yeah <laughs> let's just focus on the photon physics right because that yeah. makes that that exists in all dimensions uh -huh. so, so i'm talking about a lot of movement of of what well light light's uh -huh. consciousness uh -huh. it, it's kind of a triad that's it's a trinity it's 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 all one thing right so uh -huh. light is frequency and frequency is form and they all express one another Mm -hmm. how can how can light be frequency and form through observation mm -hmm. through the observer we know this is a fact and mm -hmm. so this doesn't change in other dimensions it's the same mm -hmm. light light works the same in all dimensions mm -hmm. um and and if you were to basically say what's the most important attribute of the human body that we really want to know about it's always going to be light it's always going to be light um and your i am presence is so important in the creation of and the constant maintaining of the universe that there from your soul level the universe can't exist without you it's the same as saying like if you were to have the midnight sonata and you took one note out of it it's no longer the midnight sonata and that's exactly how our universe oh works God, how, how we work right so that's very important for us mm -hmm. to acknowledge that fact that that's how valuable your presence is. And then, of course, how cool that we've gotten invited to the experiment of the human body. And you were invited and you agreed to that invitation. And some of us always say, you know, oh, gosh, I wish I'd read the small print on that one. Um, mm -hmm. But the, <laughs> the nice thing is, though, that you can feel it for yourself. Um, yes, apologies, my bandwidth's a little low. Um, hopefully it'll catch up for us. We're good. Um, and and if not, I'll come back on. Like, I'll get off and come back on. We'll see if it fixes oh, it. No problem. Perfect. Well, yeah. Let me know, yeah, if it's annoying. Um, Thank you. But yes, I think, so if, if I was to say, you know, okay, yeah, we could go through and get really, really heady and really scientific about this stuff. We could study very carefully. But what's the one thing you really need to consider all the time? It's that light, that light and, and how that light moves from you, how it moves from you, how it's distorted or how it mm -hmm. is more pure 
and how how that feels what's the difference between that distortion and huh. that pu purity and of huh. course then what happens when your soul uh, the purest form of your soul well you feel your soul fully in your whole body what happens then when you observe reality my friends you're hmm. becoming one with the universe we have a name for that it's enlightenment and all of us are enlightened all yeah. of you are like i'm enlightened you're enlightened sandy's enlightened we're chipping away at the stuff that's distorted that that's not um in that state of full awareness of the universal self so that's all that that in, it requires is for you to take that effort that upkeep to shift the distortion perfect well easy maybe easier said than done right because as we are in the 3d still lingering with all the, the purification and cleansing and all of the social uh you know noise and destructions of the 3d world and the crisis and everything it's hard sometimes to focus on these amazing truths right so this brings me to my next question, which is how can we bring all of this wisdom, this knowledge, these insights, the truth of who we are, all the way down, narrowing down the trickle to this physical experience and to now connecting with a topic of abundance, which is what brings us here, basically, and, and excuse me, and manifesting that prosperity. Most of us are so concerned with the manifestation of all, not just money, but actually all the things we need, call it whatever it is, even a job or even, you know, relationships, all the good things that life has to offer. But what's going on that it's so hard to many of us to bring this down into our physical reality you speak of manifesting but you speak you tell us about the true definition of um manifesting so i would like you uh, elizabeth to please explain that in in terms of its pure meaning maybe that can help us to bring some light to what you have to say later <laughs> certainly so i i actually am the opposite of most teachers in the world and i i will tell you straight up to stop manifesting Mm. why and, so <laughs> we want to be prosperous and wealthy we want to manage certainly yes, how can we do that cool. otherwise <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a different way there's a different way and it's a, it works with natural law manifesting mm. the reason why it feels so difficult is because manifesting its actual definition is old trench and it it basically means projecting your desires into the world so we all came into these bodies and these bodies already had trauma written in the dna from our from our genetics right from our ancestors mm -hmm. and that trauma is very distorting furthermore we build up our own trauma pretty much immediately upon arrival and if you're willing to chip away at both of those then you end up finding yourself in a state where, and, and we're never gonna leave the 3D. We don't wanna leave the 3D. The 3D is deeply precious. It's simply one of 12 thing, twelve arenas that you have access to in an open floor plan. The 3D will always be there and the 5D has always been here. It's never going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And these things are accessible, but they're, they're only accessible if you're not distorted through trauma. Mm -hmm. That distortion of trauma is often based in fear and desire. And when you're then saying at some point in your life, I need these things, I want these things, they come from they come from those fears and desires not being fully understood. It it that cycle of manifesting is based on your traumas, your fears and desires, and the fears and desires of your ancestors and those uh. fears and desires are often very distorted because when we say well i just wish i had a new job that's the voice of someone who's been living in the matrix someone who mm -hmm. is used to working for someone else for a certain amount of cash that was dictated by a government etc etc talk about distortion right yeah and then of course money money is this most incredible handy little tool and and we say, well, I want more money, but but that's all based in fear and desire because money itself is based in it didn't uh -huh. originate that way, but money itself now is tied to 
an incredibly empty set of it's stories. A need. It's, a, yeah. it's such a need. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so it's a distorted need. It's distorted. Mm. So all of what manifesting is and how it has been taught has been wrong, in my opinion, and um, that that's not how we should be working at all. Mm. So how, how should we be working? What's the alternative? Well, mm -hmm. I would call it synchronization or synchrony, the art of synchronizing. You see, there's this beautiful way to view the world. And we've been given this way of viewing the world by many saints and many teachers and most mm. of us have a really hard time perceiving this, and it's not valued in our cultures right now, And it, but it will be more so in the future. And the, uh, the one that I like to lean on the most is St. Francis, mm. St. Francis of Assisi. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he was pointing to his beautiful followers, his incredibly educated followers, all of the mm. monks that joined him were highly educated mm -hmm. and very wealthy oh. young men. Very much known. We would say that there were poor, poor monks, but that's all we know, right? It hasn't uh, been brought to our attention that they were, you know, educated people. Yes, that's right. They were highly his. educated. Francis was highly educated and very wealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the these men, and they were all soldiers too. And so at that mm -hmm. time, it was a big deal for them to have stepped away from that whole arena. And what were they doing? They said. We don't want to play your manifesting game anymore. We don't want to do this whole thing with the money. We don't want to do it anymore. We want to work with natural law. And so they were actually oftentimes in the forest most of the time. And they were going town to town and being very generous with their time. And they never starved. They never starved. And and one day, the the one of the brilliant monks that followed him asked him, he said, you know, why do humans... Why do humans not um, serve one another with more generosity? You know, what's really going on here? And, you know, we, we should be very worried that we're not going to eat tomorrow. You know, mm. why, why don't you ever worry, Francis? Why, because these guys were really close friends, so he could talk to him like this. <laughs> it's like, why don't you ever worry, Francis? And Francis laughs and he's like, do you see those birds over there? And he said, how, how much time do they spend worrying all the time? about food and they and they said none at all and he said why do you suppose that is and they couldn't answer and he said it's because and in a nutshell and in a modern way of thinking he says it's because they are synced up they are synced up with nature and natural law the natural law of god and they they know in that full synchrony that they have nothing to worry about and they are fully in their present self fully in their souls and they do not have to suffer the same constructs of the, the needs, wants, traumas, and troubles that humans have created for themselves. So if we're willing to break down our programming, break down our cultural conditioning, break down our trauma, what's left? It's just your soul and how it connects to the true fields of natural law. The planet Earth goes through her cycles and she doesn't have to worry about anything. The animals on this planet, they don't either. It, it's the animals who end up dependent on humans and all of those human constructs that suffer the most, but the ones that are living with natural law don't. And the human being used to live this way in the first several eras, the first several cycles of humanity we used to experience all of this and we would sync up to what is natural law and this uh, this this natural law has many factors to it and one of them is this idea of abundance abundance is very very real it works in cycles just like everything else it works in fractals just like everything else and it's not away from you it's not far it's it's in you. You're part of it. Your body is literally creating energy. All the cells of your body don't have to worry. Even if you're, even if you don't have a meal, your body can go for 30 days without food mm -hmm. and it can go seven days without water. And, oh. it, and it can't go three seconds without hope. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so when we are generous, if you want to activate this idea of syncing up, and I, I use the term activation in a chemical way, 
not a new mm -hmm. age way, a chemi mm -hmm. chemistry concept. You Can gotta, you that, uh, please? You gotta in, order mm -hmm. to, in order to make this thing called abundance work for you or turn mm -hmm. on that cycle of abundance, you need to add something to it. You got to actually what generosity. Mm. <laughs> so what, trust what and trust. Well, I think trust definitely, you know, the the whole realm of humanity has to stand on that basis of trust to even work with any of these concepts at yeah. all. Um, you have to trust that being human is the most op optimal thing for you right now. And so many of us have been programmed to hate ourselves. Mm. And I, I encourage all of you to work very hard at removing those concepts of self-hatred born of the incredible slavery that we've been through for so yeah. long. You are not a cancer on this earth. The earth would have absolutely sent us on our way long ago if that was the case. So there's an incredible amount of consent and agreement and love that comes from that trust. But then you got to be generous, my friends. The reason why those beautiful monks never starved is because they were always so generous with their time. They would show up at every town and the townspeople began to grow to really enjoy their presence. And these men were very well fed and very well taken care of. And they took vows of poverty. They didn't own anything but the robes on their backs. And mm -hmm. that, that, those lessons of Francis, I encourage all of you to go read the book, The Flowers of St. Francis. It's written by his friends. It's written by his Beautiful. friends those educated men the flowers of saint francis right mm -hmm. so you can yes. see for yourself how this works but i'll give you some more modern examples right so you know when we're when we're very um generous and we're not expecting anything back see that's the problem with manifestation it starts out with you pulling up all these fears and desires for you to work on, for you to work with. And they're they're literally rooted in your trauma. They're rooted in distrust. They're not rooted in trust. And they're they're very, very deep. They're culturally taught to you. And then we agree to act upon them as if they're lenses in our world. And those lenses are deeply distorted. And so then we're looking out in the world and we say, well, I want a car. I want a car, but I want it. I, I've been told that if I think about this particular car, that I'm going to receive it. And all the other factors don't matter. If I focus hard enough on this one car, then I'm going to receive this. And I have to believe that I've received it already in order for this to work. This is such a terrible way of working in the world. What a waste of time. What a waste of your energy. What a waste of your incredible power. Your power is literally creating the universe. And you're going to wonder if you need that job or a car, or that a little extra money or, or, or that you need to have some special new age activation to get yourself somehow worked out in a way that you're going to receive this stuff. None of these things are ever going to very work very well. And honestly, many of my clients have come to me with great suffering after having lost all of their wealth and their family and their homes because of them acting in those particular methods that don't work. They don't work because they're not synced up with nature. They're not synced up with natural law. But what happens if you go out into the world without expectation and you make room? You make room in your soul. You make room in your life. You make room in your body to receive without expecting anything. That's when miracles happen. So let me, I'll use my business as an example. Most Thanks. people don't, most people don't know, and there's no reason for them to know how much charity I give or what kinds of things I do to continually be very, very generous out into the world. I do lots of free sessions for very ill people and elderly people and children. I do lots of work in my community. I volunteer. I've, I'm well known in my local community to be very generous with money and time and effort and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And all of these things, I don't expect anything at all back. Instead, I can feel, and I want you to just feel that, the, bring up a memory where 
you were generous. Like maybe that one Christmas when you decided to go and uh, buy that family those gifts. Uh -huh. from, in in the United States, we have these little trees in like the mall, and you can pick so you can pick a a little note off the off the tree and it'll be the address of a family and and what they need for christmas and most of the time it's closed because mm. these are very poor families and my family used to do that sometimes mm. we would go so and cute. pick a bunch and we'd go we'd <laughs> purchase all so the cute. gifts and and extra stuff for the family of course but mm. giving without expectation a lot of times we never even saw those families Giving right. without expectation. And what would it do? It always made room. It made room in our home. It made room in our lives for us to receive the miraculous. You see, you, although you are of source, you're a beautiful single frequency of source. You are a single wavelength of source. You're a single form of light from source out of infinite forms of light. So you can't possibly know what is actually going to be the biggest best thing for you if you're dropping your cultural conditioning then uh -huh. then then you're going to be open and say the fact is is source definitely is going to know better than i and at no point in time have i discovered this more than when i was homeless with a child and i was homeless with a child and i had to depend on the generosity of others I didn't have any problems. I didn't have any issues. I was able to find a job, a place to live. My son was fine. We were uh. able to eat every night. Why? Because I'd actually spent six years before that being extremely generous to my community, making uh. sure that my neighbors were fed, watching their kids when they needed a little extra help making sure my friends just had somebody to talk to. I'd often have leftovers and I'd bring them over to my neighbors. All those kinds of acts of generous service in the world made room for the time that I needed a miracle. And it happened wonderfully without any issues. We weren't homeless for long. So oh. those, those sorts of ways of working in the world, my friends, it does draw on the natural beauty of humanity because humanity does create the generous miracles needed. So generosity, abundance, and of course, being able to understand that you're not separate from that natural world. You're not separate from that. And our worries are all cultural constructs and programs to keep you from it. And when you're willing to drop it, things start to change and things start to synchronize. And you'll notice that the exact right people at the exact right time and the exact right items or places or needs are met. And much, much more comes. Much, much more. So I have lots more examples, but <laughs> that's a good way. That's this a good way to proceed. No, this is just wonderful because I was thinking what happens, but you just sort of answered my question that I was just thinking. Uh, when there's some particular specific need or desire, um, so you would say that natural law would provide it by, uh, as an exchange of that generosity that was first offered out in the world. Because if there's some particular specific item, as you said, how can that be met if you're... Um, let us say, basing yourself on natural law alone, and not other methods, let's say, for, for, sure. for sure. manifestation or synchrony. Instead of manifestation, then what word would we, would we be using here? Yeah, I. so I, I just completely dropped the whole word manifestation out of my vocabulary entirely. And whenever I need something really specific, I simply offer it to the field. I offer it to the field of abundance, which is of source. And I, uh, it's literally that. I say, this is something that I think I need, but the truth is I might not know. <laughs> I might not know exactly what I need because we can't perceive the fullness of our true connections until until our traumas are chipped away enough then you can actually see and feel these connections and you can see this stuff coming um uh -huh. and, and, and you perceive it and it and it starts out and I, I i'll but i'll back up for a minute um and i'll describe how do you know that you're synced up 
Um, mm -hmm. but, but let's yeah, back that's up. A good right? question. Yeah. Yeah. Let's back up. So when I say, Hey, I'm going to offer this idea that I need this certain thing. Like, um, I live in Ecuador, so it's pretty hard to get certain stuff. Right. Uh -huh. And, um, the other day I basically put it out into the field. I said, I really need, um, I really, really need a, a, a saddle for my horse. I need a saddle for my horse. And I have no idea who, who I could possibly talk to to get this. Um, <laughs> and and uh, I, I think I'll just put it into the field, right? I didn't go on social media. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I did for some I donations. Go on social media say, I, need a, I need a saddle. I didn't do any of that. I didn't say anything. I never even told my husband. That's and awesome. I, put it, I, I put it out into the field, right? Uh -huh. and and then I get a I get an email oh maybe a few days later from a friend of mine here in, locally and she says Elizabeth I really want to take your courses would you be willing to trade my beautiful saddle oh for my goodness <laughs> and there it comes down it's from... it's it's very quick and literal yeah. because if you're really synced up and remember, and remember how Sandy said, "Hey, trust has to be involved here." <laughs> She's right. I, yeah, like okay. you think about it, you trust that it's going to happen, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I have no doubt. I have no doubts yeah. at all. And I well, don't know if it's going to be a saddle or not. So, so that is to me an ingredient that it's not that should not be overlooked. I mean, it's something that we need to practice. If that's not the case, we need to reach to that point. What elements? What ingredients are necessary? For this beautiful process to come into fruition right so uh, what i see also is that of course apparently natural law from what i understand as you are speaking elizabeth is that i don't know it does not include any greedy um let us say claim or or, or request it looks like uh, it's covering needs, basic needs. Does it cover another level of desires? If people are looking for a specific house or something more comfortable uh, for their families, etc., cetera, um, does it cover that level of desire for uh, of, of a certain item? Or does it just cover the basics so that we are just like Francis who maybe was happy with the basics, right? Going back in time, but time. Um, how does it work? Uh, people wanting a more, maybe not so basic style, lifestyle, sure. maybe aspiring to something different. <laughs> sure, but let me flip the pancake on its head, shall I? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I know that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> what, what you're saying is still running through the conditioning. When you're working with natural law okay. and you're syncing up with natural law, you don't have desire. You don't mm -hmm. have desire. You don't have needs. You don't have wants. You don't have fears. You don't have distrust. Distrust is simply always based in trauma. Any of mm -hmm. us who have any distrust, all of us can all trace it back to some disappointment where we were traumatized. And then uh -huh. it built on that. And so, again, we chip away at these things. And then you're synced up. And you know then. I'll give you another example. Um, a long, long time ago, I would have said, I really, really want a lovely farm. And I want more than one house on that farm so I can have guests or so I can run retreats and make a lot of money. And, and I had a, quite the list. And it was all dependent upon certain factors and desires. Why did I want that farm? Because I was conditioned to want it. I was taught through my very distorted culture to want it. I was taught that I need to go and find this farm and own this land as if you could possibly own land, technically. Um, in, the, in the human distorted matrix world, you own land. Do you really? I would say the earth owns us. But that being said, when, we, when we're breaking down those distorted conditions, you end up in a state where you're very still. You're not worrying about the future. 
You're not worrying about the past. You're not leaking all of your energy out. You're very, very present. You're very still. And you open yourself up and say, what is it that source desires through me today, right now, right? And so one day we were here, we'd moved to Ecuador. It's been, it was really hard at first. It's a different culture. You know, you're trying to acclimate your little kids. It's a lot. You're trying to learn a new language and, and plus you're exposed to lots of new bacteria. So lots of things were going on and we were stuck. We had been stuck in the house for seven days, very, very sick. And finally, my husband, he's like, we need to get out of the house. Let's let's rent a, a taxi because we didn't have a car yet. Let's rent a taxi to take us up to that mountain where we where your friend said you can go find some crystals. And I said, sure, why don't we do that? So we rented a taxi. We go up this mountain and we're just really present, all of us. We're all present. There's no worrying about the past, present, or future. We're just really, really there enjoying the glories of this beautiful place. And as we come down the mountain, there's a little handwritten sign on the side of the road that says Sabende, which means for sale. And both my husband and I could feel from our soul a big difference than just when you want something. (laughs) But it was given to you. (laughs) There, well, there, there's a, there's a level of what you're talking about is in order to reach that level of what we call abundance, you need to have reached the level of full total surrender to the field of source and what source is ready to put you in position to receive you are a vessel you are a tool of source and when you're fully ready to get out of the way entirely and surrender to it you'll feel the desire of source the pulling of source which can't really be called desire it might be called rather uh magnetism and it it, you can feel it literally move through your whole body it feels like a magnet it doesn't feel like desire desire is always desire always feels troublesome even if you're desiring nice things or wonderful things or healthy things it's always troublesome because it's personal and when you have Mm -hmm. the universal moving through you it's more like magnetism it's not Mm -hmm. based in anything else and so we literally felt like Drew, my my husband and I felt that that magnetic pull to stop the taxi and go look at this property. And so we pop into the property and we're not so sure, but I could feel energies that I hadn't felt before. And we had been looking at property for years and years in Southern Ecuador, many years, just for fun, even before we even decided to move. So we know we knew what was available and what wasn't. And this was different. This was this was a handwritten sign. And then later we went again and say and the same thing happened. And then I said, all right, if this is the property we're really supposed to get. And it's a challenging property. It's very steep (laughs) from my house where I'm in sitting right now to the top is a mile. And it's a (laughs) and it's a thousand foot gain on a mountain. It's jungle. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. This is not this is this if I, if I had been working with my personal desires I would have never ever bought this property. <laughs> that's not that's not what I was called to. I was called to do some acts of generosity for this place among many things. But that I sat down on the land by myself and I opened my heart to the land and I said if if this is what source is wanting us to do show me and i disappeared into pure light and some Mm -hmm. some unknown amount of time passed and my husband came up and got got me i think it was like 45 minutes and i didn't i couldn't have told you how long it was because i was gone i was just one with source in the land there wasn't any of me left and i knew Mm -hmm. that that was my answer that i was there to be one with that land and heal it and boy, like I said, if I had known what needed to be done, I would not have bought this place ever. (laughs) But I did. I did. And I and those acts of great generosity from there, removing incredible amounts of trauma, incredible amounts of darkness, 
and opening up to my beautiful land saying, I am here for you. Source set me up. We have a special relationship. Whatever I can do for you, no expectations from you. I am here to help you heal. I'm here to give uh -huh. generously. Everything that I could have ever imagined has come from that. The most beautiful abundance. The most beautiful two homes that I had wanted long ago and wasn't so sure how I was ever going to do it because I thought I needed to work in the matrix to make that happen. And that's not at all what's happened. So I, I know that these things sound very unusual, but we have to get ourselves out of the way. You're going to be set up for extraordinary events and incredible learning. And everything you could have ever imagined will come of it, but you have to get out of the way and let Source show you through that divine magnetism beyond you what needs to be done. And that's that's the best example I could possibly give. Wow, how beautiful. It's very moving. It, you touched my heart with your stories and everything that has happened to you and your family. And oh my God, I just, uh, I was envisioning in everything. Your story was like I was seeing it on a screen. I said, oh my God, this is an amazing way of living your true story. So much connection and direct uh, connection with source. It's all about that. It's all about, it boils down to connecting with our divine essence, right? Yes. And allow um, our divinity to just play through us. If, um, <clears throat> I would like to move shortly to our part three here. So I would like, I would love for you, Elizabeth, to how would you explain all of this in a capsule uh, to make it say uh, a small story uh, to sort of come up with some sort of uh, procedure? Well, these words are no longer suitable for what you're saying, but let us say something short and easy to understand. Uh, what is necessary to get there in, in your own uh, yeah we gotta get started right? yeah so how do you get to work how do you get to yeah work? yeah how do you get to make this happen <laughs> to answer to a big question manifesting now no more longer uh calling it manifesting but being in sync right so can you put it all in simple words so that we sort of wrap up this beautiful beautiful uh perspective of yours uh, my Elizabeth. pleasure i have homework for all of you Please. So, <laughs> all right. So I, I know that all of you, that you want to work in, in sync with source. And that means that you're going to want to work on your trauma. And so I'm here for you. If you need trauma resources, I have them for free. Just email myself or my assistant or email Sandy and we'll get all of that to you. And that's really important. Um, Trauma healing is number one. If you can keep chipping away at your personal and your genetic trauma, don't forget that genetic part, through many different methods, including ritual, there's lots of ways to do it. And the ones that I use, I've, I've are really tried and true, and I've been able to really trust them because they've worked for other people so well. Now, that's number one. Check that off. That's always gonna be upkeep, right? Because trauma happens, right? Like yeah. this morning was was rough and I couldn't get on early to be with Sandy, but it's okay. And you got to take the trash out. You got to do the dishes every day. You'll get to a point where it's just upkeep, where it's not going to drive you nuts all the time and you're not in pain or triggered. And then the next homework, and these two things have to be on different pages, different pages. You need to get a notebook. In fact, get two, get two notebooks, separate these things. Okay. You need to understand your fears. You got to get deep. And if you're not sure what your fears are, look at your dreams. My, um, my husband will often find the next thing he needs to work on will always come from his dreams. He won't be, no, he won't be sure, but his dreams will show him. And so dreams can help or triggers, right? So if you're triggered by anything, fears will show up. And those fears often, you'll find them, it leaks energy into the future where those fears, especially around abundance, and you'll notice and, and take a whole week or two to sit down and say, what am I afraid of when it comes to abundance? And, you know, my top fear is starving to death, even though there's never been any time in my life, this lifetime where I was even close to that. 
Um, and then I have, you know, some really clean, clear fears that are really obvious, and then some that aren't, that need to just be revealed more. And so just be open, right? And when we have that intention, that works with the source field, and the source field's going to say, oh, cool, Elizabeth says she really wants to get to the bottom of her fears. And source is going to set you up with some events. Earlier this year, I had a whole bunch <laughs> where I was like, I want to get to the bottom of my fears. And I knew what I was asking for. But these events, they really showed me and it was great, right? Because if you're really ready to do the work, you got to set that intent out and source will help you out. Source is going to reveal everything in whatever timing is best for you. So it wasn't like all those things happened all at once. They were like, you know, every week for like two months, I'd have these things happen that wow, I didn't realize I was afraid of that. And now I really can understand it. And then you you fall back on your processes, your healing processes. How do you get through those fears? It's always the trauma healing processes that get you through that, right? And that's us cleaning out the basement of our programming. And then the you're going to keep that notebook. You're going to continue to work with it. You'll be amazed at how much fear and how detailed and interesting and unusual some of these fears are and how many of them aren't even yours. They're from your genetics, but you still need to burn through them. So as we get through that, that's key. And then your other notebook is desires. And, and so uh, although the manifesting world used to teach that you want to have your special notebook with all your desires and your, and your vision boards and all that, I'm telling you to create your desire book so that you can burn all of it. <laughs> so, no, so you're so mind blowing here. <laughs> so, so here, like literally make an art project of all your desires and then set yourself up in a ritual space and light it on fire. Mm. Give it away. Give it to source. Mm. Give it as a gift. Say, here's my very limited desire source. This is so limited. This little desire here is so limited in comparison to what you are and what you offer. I offer it to you. And, and I know that you'll come up with the most beautiful, wonderful things that I couldn't even have imagined I desired that will show up. And, and so we free ourselves. You need to free yourself from your desires, my friend. And then when you have these and you work with this as a, as a psychological method, it really sinks in. And like after a month or two, you won't have to write it down anymore. It's really good to, then. The third thing is, and this one's tough because we're all kind of attached to being ourselves or getting to know ourselves. And that's all been very interesting. But that's not who you really are. None of it. And I used to, my friends used to get so annoyed at me, Sandra, because I'd always say, well, I'm an anthropologist, as if I needed to announce that all the time. Um, and, I, and I'd actually heard my friends say it, and they didn't know I was listening. <laughs> and I, and that, that made me realize, oh my gosh, is that even true? Am I really an anthropologist? No. <laughs> maybe you're then, at another level now. You you are evolving. And maybe you're in a really, but what, uh, what is what vibration. is being an anthropologist but just so a when it's here, maybe it's in the mind, right? Oh, sure. Other... It's just an identity. It's an identity. Mm. And so the next task is to write down all of your identity and do this one regularly. I do it regularly still. I do it regularly still. And that, that list has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. But even spiritual identity, like for years, I would say, oh, my essence is luminosity, because that's what my teacher told me. And then I realized, well, that's just another fancy dress, too. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a lovely dress. I loved wearing that dress. And now I'm ready to give it back to source to make room for the truth. Who is my soul, really? It's not luminosity. It's something different than that. It's much more pure than that. It has no name. It has no identity. Uh -huh. And so I, I suggest to you to, to use auspicious times like full moons. Today's a full moon. And yes. you know, sit down and <laughs> go through your fears and your desires regularly and write down your identity. Mother, father, sister, daughter, 
all the achievements you've ever made, everything that you've ever been. And I got really extreme and I said, hamster owner and cat owner. <laughs> and like, I, like, I'm not messing around here. So, you know, and then go do a ritual space, create a sacred circle, use fire. It's a great dissolver and light it all up. My friends offer your identity back to source and say, whatever I am that needs to be net that needs to be in line with natural law and the universe i intend to be that at every moment without my own personal self dictating it i want source to dictate it it's a very different lifestyle but if you can go through those three specific distortions your fears and desires your your traumas and your identity and regularly clean them up then what happens to the inner house? What happens to the dimensions inside of you? You get access to them. You get access to the full floor plan. You start to see something very different that the manifesting world does not teach, that everything is perfect already. It's all perfect, exactly, wonderfully, amazingly, miraculously perfect. And in that perfection, you're syncing up with your whole body to natural law and then you get to work with the real tools surrender trust generosity being able to be listening to your body fully knowing when that magnetic pull to that one person or that one place or that one choice that it's beyond you you can feel your whole soul getting pulled to be put into that perfect place because source made it for you and it's so much better than anything you could have imagined. And then eventually, my friends, that difference between you and source goes away. And, and I'm working on that still. But the difference between me and source is going away. So that I'm not even thinking with my brain anymore about any of this. It all unfolds the way it needs to. And then the exact right people places things events they all come to fruition and at this point my fears and desires are so limited they're so minimal and my traumas are upkeep and my identity is continuing to get smaller and smaller <laughs> the distortions go away and then you can see the truth and you feel it and you can be so present and you can actually you know that really cool feeling where Maybe you've got, you, you went swimming for an hour, right? Or you got done with some really good exercise and you have that beautiful sort of full body euphoria and you feel really expansive. You feel really good in your body, but you also feel just really good about life. Your dopamine and your serotonin are really good and you just feel really good. You feel vital. That, that is the life that you're here to be in. That's the life that you're here to experience all the time 24 7 and will it does it stay like that all the time it eventually can and for myself you know i'm still chipping away at lots of little distortions but they're all so small now they're all kind of like niggling little threads but that you full body expansive euphoria that feeling of oneness with the universe then you're not even thinking about the concept of manifestation anymore it's not useful it doesn't work with that whole entire realm anymore all all is already manifest all ah. is already manifest my friends so that's that's the nutshell step by step how do you make this work how do you start now that's how you do it that's awesome 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 and it's ah, it's just like oxygen and food to the soul to the heart and it's also very uh liberating to hear you speak these words because they resonate uh straight to the heart is oh yes finally we hear something that is easy that is flowy that is natural uh with what with ease and grace because yes the other, the other methods is true affirmations we see affirmations and all of these things but they they demand so much focus so much concentrate so much in the mind yeah and i was uh, we, we were thinking what else is possible here thank you thank you for this amazing beautiful and profound perspective elizabeth <clears throat> 
And honestly, I would stay here forever. Uh, I'm checking on the time and I would like to open up if it's okay with you. Hey, how about your offers? I know that you have lots of tools and support to our friends that you would like to share. Uh, friends, we have our tools in the chat. If you would like to check there, the links are there. And you will also receive the links again in tomorrow's email. So stay tuned for that in case you couldn't stay till the end today. Uh, you can have still the replay with all of these beautiful insights and tools tomorrow. But uh, check the chat where you will see all of the uh, links to the offers. And please, Elizabeth, tell us uh, more about what you're bringing us, what you're offering us today. I think you're frozen. Can you hear me? Hello? So yeah, when she comes back, uh, friends, yes, you can check there. Our links are there in case you would like to know more to uh, just uh, take a look and see if this resonates with you. Please go ahead and take a look there. And um, I would like to know, Elizabeth, if you can. Okay, well, she comes back then. Um, she, she mentioned that she had some technical issues from her end. So let's just go ahead. And um, I see a couple of hands here that are um, up. I would like to just uh, ask Aisha to uh, unmute yourself. And if you have a question, please go ahead and let us know. Hi, Aisha. Hi, Sandra. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity and also for sharing your wisdom earlier on about Hebrew numerology. It was a very, very, very good perspective and uh, synchronized as well because um this morning i was on youtube and i just saw um something come up about name numerology and i started counting <laughs> so it's just amazing that you were talking about it and um just until elizabeth comes back on can i ask you a question <laughs> yes absolutely go ahead yes of course thank you um so my question was um around what you had shared in your chart around uh this this person you know changing the was it changing their name and then the challenges yeah. sort of runs around because that has a huge impact so um so it was very very interesting for me that you were talking about the challenges in the first chart around number three and that is more around like coming out and speaking and you know uh, you know whatever the public engagement and stuff and I felt like you were speaking to me because those are my challenges oh. and that's exactly oh. what I'm working on yeah wow. <laughs> so, yeah so I'm, I'm working so, on becoming a speaker. so what, what are your challenges that you're feeling um recurring in your everyday life here what is it that um, you're feeling uh, I was more feeling like, you know, I was just feeling a little bit suppressed in terms of like, you know, just speaking because I, I realized when I speak up or stand up for myself, um, I end up either losing relationships or it doesn't get valued. <laughs> so, um, so and also like, you know, standing in my power because I, I love to do things for other people. I love I'm, I'm all I've always been a giver and I'm learning how to become a good receiver. Um, but it's almost like if I don't give, people wouldn't stay in the in in my life. And I, I was and as I was digging into it, my um what was coming up was around self-worth. Uh -huh. Um uh, so so yeah, so it was um yeah. Uh, well, yes, any any so are any, you in in your experience, in your uh, activities or or let us say business, do you have a business or you're running any kind of business? Uh, Okay, so, I am just on the road to set it up. Right. So you're you talk to people, you work with people, right? And they come to you for sessions or something like that. Is that what that, you do? That's that's the plan. Yeah, you know, set up okay. my coaching business. So it's interesting that the people that will come up to us will be people who will, especially in the beginning, these are the people that are showing us our mirror, you will see people who are presenting to you things that you in your inside, you also project because you are experiencing a lesson that you're learning about that, which that person in front of you is showing to you, which is inside of you. So you will see yourself in these people. And this is just, you know, an indication that you need, you need to work on these things. So if these people are maybe showing that, oh, I don't believe in what this person is showing or saying maybe this is what you felt before so you need to work on these aspects 
Yeah, the code number three has to do with expression. It's all about that. It's all about self-worth and to move out of scarcity to check and see, well, okay, this is my lesson. I'm going to, just like Elizabeth said, to just confront our fears because there's no fear. Once we just make the decision to be out there, huh, it's not that terrible. And you actually, uh, you, 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 you testify uh, by just coming out that this is not that terrible. And so little by little, you become more and more confident. The more you move forward with your fears and doubts, you will say, hey, this is not that bad. Hey, this is, and so you become stronger and more self-confident and more self-aware and you gain clarity within you and without. So this is all about being aware of what's going on. The chart, the six-pointed star of David, which is very sacred, is showing us all of these things. So um, the good thing is that, that you can actually confirm if there is such a challenge. So to know that this is what I, I'm here to do in this incarnation, to really take care of these things and to work on these things consciously on a conscious level to transmute these things and make them additional nuggets of gold. They're not supposed to stay as challenges. These are things that we came here to work on and to transmute and to add them up to our toolkit of talents and gifts that our soul has given us before birth. But we are, we're all of these gifts. But we're playing a game here and we're focusing on different things here in a body. But this is not truly who we are. We're just playing a game. And we need to make our body, our vehicle, as transparent as, as and clear. And this is again, you know, um, connecting with what uh, Elizabeth was just saying to make us transparent and clear and pure so that we don't need any more of these things in our lives. So it's a process. Yeah, yeah it would be. Thank you. It would be nice to check on your codes. That would give us more, um, you know, information um, just to see what's going on. If you're interested, just, you know, just go to the link and I would love to see that. It's all up to you if it resonates. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. I think that's, that's one of my plans as well. And thank you so much because like I said, it's just, uh, you said it just beautifully ties into what Elizabeth was saying as well. Yeah. Um, I can see she's Back on, is it okay if I can ask her the question? Yeah, sorry, my internet went out. You know, I live on a on a wild mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's wonderful to see you back, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so okay. all I heard, all I heard was worthlessness. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm I'm here to uh, hear what where you're at, Aisha. And, uh, what can I do to clarify for you where you're at with your business and what you want to bring to the world? Yes, absolutely. First of all, thank you so much, Elizabeth. It's just so nice to come face to face with you. I think you're absolutely magical. And um, <laughs> um, and uh, I follow you through different summits and stuff. So anyway, sorry, I'm just <laughs> on that trail with you. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so so my, my question was, I think um, one question was, which Sandra already asked you at the end, like, so what do we do? <laughs> and um, the other one was, uh, just to give you a bit of a context, so I'm, I'm trying to clear out all those distortions as well. And um, I've been taking sometimes baby steps, sometimes giant leaps. And uh, so I'm trying everything that is within my awareness at the moment. And I, and I believe from the steps that you've, um, you've mentioned, it's, it's about dissolving the ego, isn't it? And it's more like, what are your soul um, uh, prints or I don't know what's the, what's the right word to describe it. But for me, um, I think the challenge that I come across when I go through my shadow work for abundance is um, our two things. One is around self-worth and one is around believing or having the conviction or faith. Um, so any, any nuggets that you can offer me for that, I'd be so, so, so grateful. Yeah, for sure. So there's a way you can refine that um, sort of listing out of things that we were talking about before, right? And we call this in, um, it, this particular method was developed by Leslie Temple Thurston, who's a very powerful teacher. And I would suggest that you might like to grab her book because there's some tools in there that are going to help you to because what, what's happening right now is you need to do mental clarity. You need to clarify your mental, right? And later, and, and that's the hardest part. So, so really work with that. If at any point you're literally doing something for your business and you have any of these little 
beliefs, voices, concepts show up or pop up, or you feel that a really terrible feeling of worthlessness arise and, you know, deep within you and you're like, Bleh. um, and, and, um, those kinds of things, um, are often tackled quite nicely through the mental processes first. So Leslie's book is called, and I'm putting it in the chat, the marriage of spirit. And mm grab this book because it's full. It's packed full of tons and tons of little tools. Let me give you one. It's called squares. It's chapter 11. So squares are, you need to understand you're working in a polarity. Half the dimensions of consciousness have polarities and duality in them and half of them don't, which is, a, I think, a cosmic hilarious joke because that means that our whole universe is literally built on the, the natural uh, cycles of polarities, right? And what is worthlessness? Worthlessness is part of a polarity. It's worthlessness and arrogance. And it's one of the polarities that Leslie tackles the most. Can you read also, the name of the book, please, Elizabeth? So that we- The Marriage of Spirit. Yeah, um, Susan, it, it's, uh, the website is corelight.org. And they, they do have chapter 11, which is squares available for free there. Yeah. So core light, it's Leslie Temple Thurston. Yeah. You'll like her very much as a, she's a very mental teacher. Um, and, you know, you want mental, emotional, spiritual. She's built fill the mental part. But what do you do? So you, you got to sit down and you say, well, why do I think I'm really worthless? What is all this worthlessness stuff? And you got to list that stuff out. And then you got to say, well, how am I also arrogant? Do I have any arrogance? And uh, it's tricky because um, if you have more of one, it's because you're covering up the other. So like I have a, I've dealt with a huge amount of arrogance in my life to get me by. And that's how I became like the top, top, top best of everything I ever did. Right. And, and yet once I chipped away at my arrogance, what did I find? I found this massive well of worthlessness that I'd been hiding from the whole time with my incredible arrogance. So that pendulum had to swing real hard over into that worthlessness and punch me deep down. So I could recognize that that arrogance was simply always there covering up it's my shield. worthlessness. It's always a shield, yeah. That's great, it's a shield. So then now you have this clarity and you'll dig into both and you'll be very surprised at those little pieces of arrogance that are pretty tricky that, ha that have been hiding all along. And furthermore, you need to understand how to collapse it. So the polarity, there's always a middle way out of a polarity. There's a middle way out. And, and polarities work like big hamster wheels. You're running really hard into worthlessness right now because that's what you were taught to do. It's a condition. It's a conditioning, cultural conditioning. I teach people, literally, I have a full two-part course on dissolving cu cultural conditioning. It's a technique. And you need to recognize, I'm not really worthless. I've been taught to be worthless. I'm not really arrogant. I've been taught to be arrogant. Of course I was. I was in academia. Um, and so then you're then you're accepting both because you're healing it. You're also accepting it. You're saying, that's true. This stuff has got me this far, man. This worthlessness and this arrogance has got me this far. Thank you so, so much, dear, amazing frequencies. That's all they ever were. They're just frequencies. All those beliefs are just frequencies. That's all they ever were. They're distorted. They don't, they're, they're not matching up with you. They're not harmonizing you. It's not syncing up to natural law. Natural law doesn't have any worthlessness. My cat has no worthlessness or arrogance. My, the birds in my yard, none of them do. The trees, none of them do. Why do we? And hmm. that's the truth. If you want to get back to your natural true self, drop hmm. it right and then you drop it by welcoming it that's another pancake flipped you gotta yes. welcome the stuff yeah embracing <laughs> these things you yeah, gotta embrace it. so when you embrace them both you find this middle way you find this acceptance out of right. the trouble out of the processes all out of the programming yeah and you stop thinking of things as worthless or arrogant now sandy's right we'll draw in stuff our traumas and our subconscious stuff has certain signatures and it's it's ironic because here here is this beautiful thing that we call ego right 
we want that ego. You don't want to get rid of ego. You want uh -huh. to you want to make it transparent. It's supposed to be a transparent interface between uh -huh. the personal self and the universe. Eventually, you don't need your personal self anymore, which means the ego is just kind of there. Like a light switch you never have to turn on anymore. Right? Uh -huh. Eventually, eventually, that's what it feels like. But at first, we we these egos, they're full of a lot of these programs, these, these conditions that you've been taught. You've been taught everything, even at a very subtle level, because your DNA is a transmitter receiver at a perfect, great, grand degree in, in ways that you can never clock with your mind. So... So you're looking out into the world and here's all your soul's light and it's coming out the other side. And what is it doing? It's like a giant Batman sign for all of these different kinds of people. <laughs> right? So, so at this point, um, like early on in my career, working with individuals like you, same thing was going on. I was having certain clients show up, mostly people who were demonically being oppressed and possessed like pretty much across the board. Why? Because I was being demonically oppressed. Why? Because I'd learned how to work with all of that. My parents are devout Byzantine Catholics. Of course I was working with the angelic demonic realm. I mm. chose that as my beginnings. And once I dropped all those conditions, all those, and that, that becomes more and more transparent. Now the variety and the the spectrum of the people who find my skills useful is so much bigger, so much bigger, right? And that's what you're shooting for because you're here to be in service. That's that's what's that's what your nature is, right? But try working with this idea of squares, knowing that you're on a hamster wheel with some of this stuff and that you're running really hard in one direction. And you can probably see it in your life in other ways, but uh, Leslie tackles um, some really specific polarities, but pretty much everything works in polarities. And so that's really key because it'll show you your fear and desire of worthlessness, my dear. Think about that question. How have I desired to be worthless? Well, my my dear, if you're desiring to be worthless, then that means you won't get in so much trouble because people aren't going to care about you so much and you won't have so much of that negative or or any sort of attention on you anymore, right? And then what if you desire arrogance? How have I desired arrogance? Oh, loads, so that I could be at the top, top of my class and my university. I was the top of my whole university. It was, it was important to me. And then I graduated and my whole life fell apart because none of that meant anything. It didn't mean anything. All that arrogance- it Came full circle. Nothing, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. So. So these kinds of things begin to reveal themselves. So that's how a square works. It's fear and desire. And then, of course, your polarity, worthlessness and arrogance. How do you fear arrogance and how do you desire it? How do you fear worthlessness and how do you desire it? Start to use that mental process to break this down in bigger chunks, right? And then the next step for you is to say, now, how have my ancestors brought all of this in? So I'm Scotch, Irish, Dutch, which is basically Viking and Basque. And so these three, my ancestors have really specific crazy things that happened to them and their fears and desires and their traumas were very unique, but they're all written in my DNA. And when you intend it, you don't have to know anything about them. But when you intend it and you say, source, help me get to the bottom of all the polarities that my ancestors have been working with. You're going to use the same idea to break that down, too. And this ha this this is a systematic way to get through this stuff faster. So it's not just hoping that stuff's going to show up every day. You're actually you're actually asking source to set you up with these equations of light is what I like to call them equations of light. I'm trying to get lighter. I'm trying to get more myself. Help me. And I want to focus on this because this is what's up in my awareness and what's running in my mind right now. Help me source to unfold this and, and show me the truth. My biggest breakthroughs happened when I realized one of them was when I realized that I desired banishment. I desired banishment. I wanted to be banished. Why? Because then I can say and do whatever I want. And nobody uh, can say otherwise. 
Interesting. And that, like, that wow. blew my mind. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been censoring myself. I've been censoring myself. And deep down, I just want to be sent away so I can do and say whatever I want to say. <laughs> so That's awesome. That's very awesome. Powerful. Play, play with That's that. That's awesome. Yeah, great, great. It was a full session for you, Aisha. I think I'm very grateful for <laughs> to, to Elizabeth. And uh, I know that this truly has been of great use, uh, I hope. So thank, yes, you. thank you, thank you so much, Aisha. Yeah, I would like to just move on because we are past the time, but I would like to uh, just uh, take a look at these other two uh, friends. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I would like to, yes, uh, I would like to give now an opportunity to Chris. She has her hand up. Would you like to come in? Thank you. Hi, Chris. Hey, uh, Hello, Chris. Hi, Elizabeth. Um, thank you for hosting this, Sandra. Um, I'm super curious about the numerology, um, the oh. different way that you do it as opposed to the thank standard you. typical way. It's fascinating. Um, Elizabeth, so my question is, I, for my whole life, as far as I can remember, uh, the, the dream that recurs all the time is changing outfits going somewhere and realize my outfit doesn't suit this or I'm going to go shopping for the, this outfit or so is that about um me just searching for identity or is that me just a, a fear that what I'm presenting doesn't fit in or I what what are your thoughts yeah I think so um I think it's that and much deeper it's your discomfort with the matrix, you know, um, when the dr dreams are really important and we, and just as a side note, yeah. these all come from the fourth dimension. So yeah. you can, you can enter into that dream realm awake or asleep, but for Chris, her soul and her subconscious are like, we have this really deep seated fear, Chris, and we're going to play it out in that, in the Bardos uh, until you get it. <laughs> Right. And, and what is that? Well, um, the truth is, is that if you were to play out the dream in waking life, and this is how you're going to get to the bottom of this is you need to replay the dream while you're awake. And so you got to just get really relaxed and it's, it feels like daydreaming. Right. And, and you, you don't want a bunch of stuff going on because you, you need to just be really relaxed as if you're going to go take a nap type thing. And it's just so lay on your bed or on the couch and get relaxed and say, all right, I'm going to go back into that dream. And you'll find that you can easily because it's repeated itself so often. And then go in and say, all right, let me try a few angles here. What if I was to actually match up with the energies of the event or the situation I'm going into? What would I even wear to match up with it? And you'll find that 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 there's either no options or that they're very limited and none of them feel good or or nice to you at all even though technically it would make it easier for you to navigate the situation the matrix that you were brought into you'll find that these things do not work for you they don't they won't feel good and then you're going to try mm -hmm. then you're going to try this this whole a whole other different angle right in the fourth dimension you you ought to work with many angles you got to try lots of different ways to work so that you can find your way now because the fourth dimension is tricky and it's full of all sorts of strangeness and copies and randomness but you got to go in and you say all right well what if i don't wear anything what if i show up naked what happens you don't know yet because mm -hmm. you got to go try it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then the third one is, well, what if I just wear my soul? What if I wear my soul? What 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 does that outfit look like? Let it reveal itself to you. You don't know wow. what that outfit looks like. Let the outfit reveal itself to you. Try it on and then go back into the situation and see what happens. You'll find that if wow. you if you do these that and, and I think you can probably guess and feel deep in your gut what's going to happen. But I want you to try it anyway. And and I and I think that if you go naked, you'll find yourself uncomfortable but neutral. Uncomfortable in that um, the situation 
isn't going to necessarily enjoy the fact that you've showed up naked, but there's nothing bad that's going to happen to you. Um, when you wear energies that that are that are that might be un, not syncing up with your true nature, and and then you go in, that's when you're so uncomfortable. Those outfits are those are programs, those are beliefs, those are cultural conditioning. And and if you pay really right. close attention to how those outfits are arranged, you would never wear that stuff, right? And then if yeah. you go and you say, well, what does my soul's outfit look like? And you try that on and you show up you'll find that you're not even having any sort of reaction or issue or any problem at all. And that the comfort level is a whole other level. And then you can take that while you're still awake and practice wearing it while you're going about your day and your errands and cooking and whatever you want to do and see what that feels like to just wear your soul's energy but you need to see it and perceive it and you need to dream this is called mystical dreaming you need to dream up what is it like to have my soul be an energy i can wear what does that look like and even if you can draw a little picture of it or try to find something online that looks kind of like it just so that you can connect to that energy and anything keeping you from wearing it because you want to notice all that stuff too so you can work on it um but this is how you'll work with what your soul's trying to show you through the fourth dimension and you can do it on purpose while doing mystical daydreaming and then start to practice with it in real life and see how that feels right and then you'll do the other things i've taught you too but this will this is personally what i would uh, suggest to you Wow, thank you. I, 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 the idea of just asking my soul what it would be wearing is incredible. I'm, I want to go do it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you'll, you you'll so be much. so amazed at how, and, and watch this. This is a benchmark. Remember I told you, how do you know you're synced up, guys? Well, many of you are synced up to a great degree. You're already seeing the numerical patterns that show up in your life, right? You're already seeing some of the very interesting patterns some and then your dreams start to be very prophetic your dreams start to come true you start to have more lucid dreaming there's a long list of things that you can that you could say are benchmarks to knowing that you're synced up but for you for you chris you'll also find that as you're syncing up to your soul's energy and wearing it that you, that your body is, becomes more comfortable and one of those benchmarks is that your friends and your family are going to say Chris, mom, my love, you look so awesome. Like, what have you been doing? If you lost weight, you're like brighter. And you'll people will say it. They'll they'll notice it. Watch, watch. Mm. My kids always notice immediately. They they always say, "You look different, mom." <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have fun. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Sandra, I think you're, uh, we can't hear you, Sandra, or I can't. I'll just take this opportunity to say hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Damien. <laughs> nice your, your sharing is great. Your personal sharing and, and spiritual wisdom is great. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. What a wonderful thing to hear. Thank you so much. I'm good just to so see glad. You, you good too. To see you. you look good. Yeah. You look good. That's great. I hope Sandy's Michael got worked out. Um, let's see. Oh, good. Okay. So, you know, to keep the ball rolling here a little bit while Sandy works on her mic. Um, I, Alice, you're, you're on mic. I suppose maybe Sandy wouldn't mind if I took your question. I'm not sure. 
Can you type to me, Sandra? She says we're fixing the problem. Yeah. <clears throat> It's been just so weird. It's phone man and it's tech problems, yeah? Sure. So Alice, um My question. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to over over speak Sandy or or take any sort of control, but I suppose um she probably won't mind because we were gonna end up at, uh answering you anyway. So I'm right. all ears. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for this wonderful um session uh, especially on generosity my pleasure um i studied for many years with a psychic and channeler who used um just for convenience and, and a minor part of his work uh the michael system i don't know if you are familiar with i've well, heard of it i don't know anything about it yeah um, and basically, it organized um, um, human beings at, into levels so of soul ages. Um, and so, you know, f first up to seventh uh, or eighth, I can't remember. And um, as a result, whenever I hear um, super evolved people talking about, well, here's what you do to, to come into alignment with um, the universe and um, attract what you need. I my go to response because of all those years of working in that system was is, well, you must be transcendental age soul, and here I am sure. struggling <laughs> along, <laughs> struggling along at third level old or whatever they said I was, you know. Um, and so it's probably outside the realm of my, um, you know, scope of the scope as a soul, at least in this lifetime. So is that just a, another distortion that I need to work with? Or is there some truth to that? Um, here's how I look at it. When I see someone's soul, and that's a, that's a, that's a skill that my soul has, right? Because each of our souls have skills. When I see people's souls, I we're all from the beginning of time. We don't have a different age, right? And we and but we will agree to play different roles at different times. Kind of like I agreed to be 40 years old this time, but you also agreed to be the age you're at because you were carving the way for me to come here and to be supported without being persecuted so I could serve you. So really, it's my job to be in service and honor you in this lifetime as my elder and thank you for having carved that way for me, right? So that I don't, so that I can actually do this work without being persecuted. Because if, if you hadn't done that, if all of you, pretty much all of you, if you hadn't done that for me, for us, then I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be dead. So it's very important for us to recognize where we're at right now and um those old those systems were built during the kali yuga so they worked in the kali yuga it worked to have caste systems it worked to have chakras it worked to have delineated concepts about our soul ages and and different kind ideas that emotions are are specific frequencies etc all of these even Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics was built during the Kali Yuga and it worked during the Kali Yuga. Does it apply now? No. And that's that you're on the edge of something really cool. We're all on the edge of this. We all need to, we're all linked up together. I'm not better than you. We're all on the cutting edge. We're all on the, that edge together. And for years, I've had visions of all of us just arms linked, no matter what age we are and saying, yeah, let's do it. We're going to jump. We're jumping into the Satya Yuga. We're jumping into the light. We're willing to give up all of the other tools that might've worked up till now. And literally we're talking about within this year, this year. So perhaps that method even last year was useful, but now it's not because everything's breaking down. It's becoming more formless in the light, in the light that we're receiving literally from the galactic center as we ascend out of the edge of the galactic matter the material field 
So it's really, I think it served you very, very well up till now. And all you need to do is back into that truth that we all came from the beginning of time. And if you're, if you allow that as the answer in your mind program, so your mind program pops up and, and she's been so helpful for so long, wonderful little programs that have been running, but that program runs now just like a little pop-up on your computer. And you can say, Oh, well, actually I need to dismantle this program. And you're going to do it by saying, thank you very much. How, how useful you've been. And I am the soul in charge and I'm going to, I'm I'm going to reprogram now. And my reprogram is that we're all from the beginning of time. We're all the same age as souls. And that, and then you bow to it. Gratitude shuts down all programs in the mind. Thank you so much for trying to help me. I know that you've said that I'm worthless. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know you're trying to help me live in the matrix. And that was very useful for a long time but I'm reprogramming now and we can shorten it. I, I like to say, thank you. I'm in charge. I have a different plan. And then I name the plan in my mind. All souls are the same age. And then I take a deep breath to let the body know that this is okay. And with, within a week or two, you'll be totally deprogrammed. And you can start to look at anything else that might've been built during the age of the Kali Yuga that needs to just stay there. <laughs> For example, um, I built an entire body of work all about the chakras, a huge body of work. And I, and I tend to be pretty prolific about that stuff. And one day it became very clear to me that the chakra system was built in the Kali Yuga and that it wasn't going to be useful for me anymore. So I actually took my entire website down. I took all my work down. I completely removed it. And I removed all my thinking about the chakras. And I said, I'm wide open. I have no idea how I'm going to be aligned. I have no idea. I don't know. I'm open. I'm open to whatever is going to work best in this next realm of light. And I stumbled upon the Dantian centers, the golden ratio in the body. And that fit better for me. So I don't use the chakra system anymore. I use the Dantian centers and the golden ratio in the body. And it made more sense to me. And it's and it's better suited for where we're heading. So that's my answer to you. It's not that it was bad or wrong. It's just that it was built during a time where we were in a very compressed time. We were cut off from a lot of certain qualities of light during a very long age of darkness and now we're coming out of it so it's up to us to pave the path for the next humans and say well we don't really know but let's be wide open let's be wide open to a whole other way of thinking and you don't have to take my idea of the souls all being the same age you can come up with whatever works best for you but be open let source show you and you'll you'll be able to move from there. But then you deprogram your brain. And that's the simple way. Gratitude, letting your body know you're in charge. You're the soul in charge. And here's what's going to work best for us. And then we take a deep breath. And you might need to do that 100, 200 times. But the brain will get it. And you'll find one day that it just stops. It stops using that method. Because it believes you know. <laughs> your brain takes a while, but... Check, try that out and see what works for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's very helpful. You're so welcome. <laughs> I relate. I relate. I've got a lot of like Newtonian physics. I've had to throw that out entirely. And that's been tough because mm -hmm. I've been taught to speak in that language. But we have better physics now. <laughs> Great. Okay. So. Um, Agustine is saying, all right, let me go back up through. Um, Aisha, what do you need me to type exactly? I'm not sure. Oh, the Dantian. Okay. So let me go down here and type to everyone. It's Dantian, the Dantian centers, and they come from a uh, Taoist Buddhism. Yeah, or Dantian, exactly. And it's the three minds. There's the brain mind, the heart mind, and the gut mind. And if you've heard me talk about anything, you've heard me talk about that. 
in the past. All right, and then, um, oh, I'm, I, I love all these sweet compliments. Thank you so much. And Augustine says, Sandra asked me to go ahead and close our session together. Um, and talk about my special offer before I do, because I created something for you and quite happy to do that for her since her mic's not working for some reason. It's a full moon, weird day, who knows? And yeah. whatever, you know, we, sometimes our, our our deep down fears like, oh my gosh, my, my show, I can't even finish my show type thing because my mic stops in the middle of it. We, we, <laughs> we got to deal with it. So um, let me talk a little bit about my special offer I developed for you. Because I was pulling together, um, it's on my site, and it's the prismatichuman.com forward slash abundance, and then the number eight, right? Because, of course, numerology eight is the abundance number. It's the abundance number because it's infinite. It it, it works with the synchronized field, and so eight is special. Um, but my special offer is eight, eight classes for 147, and these are really specific classes. And that my intent was I needed to go through everything I've ever created. Most of the classes I'm going to offer you, well, um, some of them I've never offered before or or I haven't offered in many, many, many years. So you've never even seen them. Um, and the first one, this one's one of those, is called Body Love. We can't do any good abundance work in the world. We cannot work with generosity, can't work with trust if we don't recognize how fabulous our bodies are. But remember how I said that that chakra system was built during the Kali Yuga to get us through those times of darkness? Well, when we've been wearing that system, because that's what we've been doing, we've been wearing the system. We've been saying, my, my system works this way. When we've been wearing that system, there's also been some very tricky programs that have settled in different parts of the body. So for example, there's a program here in most people, men and women in the throat that I call the hush program. The hush program comes from early on when we're told to hush, when we're running around having a good time as a little kid and we're screaming and having fun and, or we're trying to express our opinion or we think we know about something or why can't I share what I'm saying or I don't have the words or so many different ways that we've been told to stop talking. And that program is a type of trauma. And in each of the so-called chakras, we actually hold these weird programs too. So the chakra system acted like um, a way to move energy so that we could move more freely during a very dark time on this planet. But it also unfortunately got hooked into the matrix like so many other good things and those chakras then started to attract certain programs so the body love class is going to help you dismantle all of them and understand them and it, it can be very profound because suddenly you start to see your body differently and you'll feel physically better and then class two is all about those three minds how to heal the three minds and it's the full workshop it's how it's i it's the full entire workshop how to heal your brain your heart and your gut and in every way possible both physical mental emotional and spiritual and so i am very thorough in this workshop i want to make sure that you know how to work with these three brains and discern the truth for yourself using your body properly you can't work with natural law if you can't be in your body fully and grounded into those minds and understanding how to use them and what the differences are between them because they're not the same and then the third class is the playground of time i find that we have completely screwed up the entire concept of time and i want to help basically heal that <laughs> because we've been working with a very sick way of, of working with time. We've been taught to leak all of our energy into worrying about the future. We've been taught to leave those horrible doors of the past wide open so that their stinky breeze can keep messing with our lives. How do you work in the present really 
And is there any more maneuverability there? There is. There's a whole other way of working. There's a whole other axis when you work with navigating time. And, and I have a way to understand it, but also how to help your friends and family stop working in those same ways too. So you can stop going to these family events where everybody's talking about the past. It's super annoying. Then you never want to go to Thanksgiving again. But you can actually help your friends and family very simple ways to get the presence and the consciousness in a, a group of people that you care about to be very heightened and then uh, stop putting all that energy into the past or leaking it into the future. So we can end that struggle. And if you can end the struggle around time and leaking all that energy, then you got all your energy present, then you can start to work with abundance better, right? So lots of tweaks here. And then the class number four, if you want to get really deep into how to work with polarities, Leslie's got her different methods, and but I go really deep into them and then beyond them. And so the fourth class is healing polarities, unlocking the inner realms. How do you really know what polarities to work with? What are the nuances? Are polarities the same for everybody? The answer is no. How do you know what yours are? How do you know what your middle way is versus mine? And so really getting into that method, and I've been practicing that method for over 15 years straight. So being able to have that knowledge from someone who's been working with it, and now I don't even have to think about it anymore. It just is a natural way of living. But I want to get you to that point, right? And earlier we were talking about how understanding and breaking down fears and de desires and polarities is key in your work with abundance, that field of abundance. Then class five, right? We build up. We build up to this point. Class five is literally the truth about manifesting, the art of synchrony, where I tell you to stop manifesting. But then I get you really deep into more about what we've talked about today and how synchrony really works and basically the steps the other baby steps you got to take to changing your thinking so that you can be that creator being so we build up to that point then you'll be ready right then okay now i can start practicing synchrony versus manifesting because you'll have really um set your body and your field up better to do so and you'll notice more of what keeps you from synchronizing and you'll have the tools to deal with it and then i want to bring you into class number six which i haven't offered in over a, in a very long time this class and all of these are instant access so if you purchase this package you get it immediately um but class number six is a very special workshop called the yellow crystal seed of purpose and it's based off of deeply mystical, esoteric, and shamanistic concepts, both from the Mayan calendar and also from other bodies of knowledge. But it's all based in ritual. And I walk you through reclaiming the skill of ritual in manifesting. Ritual is one of the technologies that we can use to manifest properly. And instead of manifesting, of course, synchronize properly, right? So if you're able to understand your true vision from your soul, and you can use the methods that I teach you in this workshop, and you start to use ritual, like when I told you to write down in your identity, create a sacred space, and then burn it. That's a ritual, and it's incredibly powerful. It's one of the technologies that humans use to get the ball rolling in their lives and beyond and if you're here to like we all are to affect the world to make this a better place rituals how you get those waves out beyond you right even though it seems personal it's not and this also gives you access to your deeper dream realms into possibility right because how do you access the fifth dimension you got to go through the dream realms and the fifth dimension is those fractal possibilities. But if you're syncing up properly to, with your soul, to source, which is the same thing, 
then whatever's showing up in the realms of possibilities is much easier for you to dance with. And that's exactly what it is. It's a dance. Hello, can you hear me now, people? Yes, thank you. <laughs> I was just oh, finishing up two more classes to describe and then, um, okay. then we can do our closing yeah. comment. I had um, some uh, internet problems, so just making sure that you can see me and so that we can close uh, nicely and neatly. So yeah. go ahead and uh, please take a look at the chat people, so that you can see all of the links and all of the offers that we have here uh, for you. So please go ahead, uh, Elizabeth, and then- My pleasure. Just two yeah. more. And, and, yeah. Um, so so, yeah. yeah, that's right. So our seventh class in our package that I'm offering is called Making Miracles Together. And remember how I just said, as you start to get ready for syncing up, and then we get really deep into synchrony, in class five or so, then you're going to be building up more skill from there around ritual. And in Perfect. class seven, I teach you how to work in ritual, not only for in, to, to work in ritual in pure, generous service, right? So if, right. if class six is all about how to work in ritual to serve the what what source needs you to be doing in your synchrony, and then letting that ripple out into the rest of your life. Class seven is how you use ritual in synchrony to help the whole world, That's right? Beautiful. So we're building our skills. We're building our abundance muscles here. Beautiful, very beautiful. <laughs> and then lastly, class eight. Class eight is, all right, now we're gonna bring in the angels. <laughs> um, so beautiful, just going. Back. When we do sync up through ritual, and we we are then and so like let's say you remember how I said I'm really generous with sessions I'm generous with money I'm generous with volunteering and these kinds of things, yeah. But I in in class seven, if you're if you don't have maybe you're stuck at home in bed and sick, mm -hmm. you can still you can still change the world, you can still create incredible generous acts mm -hmm. in your bed, my friends. And wow. then, and then, then you start ordering around the angels because they can get it done for you too. So we build on the skills of generosity and abundance to the point that one of your great grand inheritances of being a homo sapien is wow. we have literal armies of angels. They're waiting for you to say, hey, I'm, angels, go, go hang out with that homeless guy. Go, go protect him. Go help him. Hey, angels, go bless all the people in that whole grocery store. Angels, bless all the food here. These are acts of generosity that go way above and beyond. And then you can start using your team of angelic beings to start to put more and more generous power out into the world. Watch the miracles come back to you. So I've created this package to build from the body out into the universal field and then make it easier for you to put generous action of power and grace out into the world so that you can synchronize properly into that's the beautiful. Event. everything is there the everything yes, is there all, all the steps are there if you want to transform yourself once you know where you're heading where you once you know who you are once you are ready for this because i think it takes a lot of trust and really transmutation of all of the garbage first right in order to clear that uh, prismic human being that we are meant to be to allow for all of these things to happen to connect with our source I mean maybe we need to really um, clear our energy field so that we can allow for all of these connection with the divine so all of these steps are wonderful Elizabeth so you're telling us from scratch how to move up to the higher levels of um, let us say being in sync with the field of abundance which is what uh, you've been talking about all along, right? Mm -hmm. So great. So the, yes, uh, Elizabeth's link is here, friends, in the chat, so that you can actually click on there and see um, all the beautiful things that she's been talking about. Uh, so if you're interested, just go ahead and take a look. And uh, yes, uh, and also if you're interested in the Soul Blueprints Codes Illumination System to check and see what you're encoding based on your birth name is and see if you have the code of the lesson where we are going from poverty to wealth, 
Again, you have uh, the link there in case you want to check it out and see if it resonates with you and you would like to use this tool as well. So different perspectives, different ways to reach your destination because you friends, you have the last word here. You're the one who um, are going to make the choices with all of the tools that are here for us in, in, in the support of our path, right? So any words to close up Elizabeth that you would like to give us to give us with today? Just understand that you haven't been doing anything wrong. You haven't been doing anything wrong up till now. It's all been exactly perfect. And it's now, it's in divine timing that you can try this out, that you can feel into this for yourself and go from here and know that there is this incredible playing field where your generosity and your abundance become your lifestyle become you, where you're syncing up to that. And you no longer have to project any fears and desires into the world at all. So know that that's possible. Know that that ability to be so generous with blessings, being able to work in the world without having to actually physically do anything and be so generous all the time with those great blessings. And know that you haven't failed or anything like that up till now, there's no such thing. You can't fail in consciousness. You can't fail in consciousness. You can only learn. You can only create novel new ways in consciousness, which is exactly why the universe exists. So lay back into yourself. You don't march forward into becoming your soul. You fall backwards. So fall back into that. Let that really take over that profound feeling of oneness and euphoria and love. Be held by yourself and you'll be able to see more clearly and feel the truth and deep down in your gut know when the right next thing is and what the right next thing to do or say is. All of these things do not have to be run through the mind anymore. And also furthermore, just really nailing home what our friends have talked about earlier, wondering if these old ways, if they've been doing it wrong all along. No, not at all. That was all meant to be done. And so that's why you're here, is to watch the world be part of this universal cycle that we're in, the galactic cycle, and take great advantage of it by really bowing to with gratitude everything that you've tried on everything you've been before and love it love that fully that's the only way you shut doors behind you is to be in gratitude so today let me just leave you with that leave you with that great deep gratitude for everything you've all been everything we've all been up till now everything that the world has been up till now millions and billions of years, trillions of years of very interesting things up till this very precious moment, which is unique. And you have full 100% presence in this moment to hear and feel and see for yourself if what I've said today resonates. So I want to give that, that sovereign being back to you you are a creator of this reality it's now the divine time that you needed to hear this and take it run with it and see what you can do with it and continue to be in that state of awe that will naturally come as you realize how wonderful all of this really has been up till now so that we can jump we can jump into the golden age so it's our chance it's our time that's my final message. <laughs> and indeed, on that note, we're closing, friends. This has been an amazing, and we've been on a roller coaster here uh, with so much enlightenment, so much uh, support uh, to your journey. This is our hope from our hearts to yours. And yes, we're closing till another time uh, where we'll come up with more uh, perspectives of how to create your magnificence and your abundance or your uh, synchrony as we have learned today to be in accordance with natural law see you soon friends thank you elizabeth can you stay longer elizabeth please stay on sure. <laughs>
Bye bye, friends. See you bye. soon. You'll have a replay link tomorrow in tomorrow's email so that you can watch uh, the video again and more information will be in your box. So stay tuned and watch for your emails tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Take care. Namaste. <laughs>